Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today we have a channeling session with Joe DiMaggio. Now I did have a few requests after channeling Marilyn Monroe quite a few times, let's say. She's one of my favorites. Love Marilyn Monroe. It was recommended that I try to channel Joe DiMaggio, so I will, even though you guys, you guys, I am not a baseball fan, I'm not a sports fan at all, at all. But because of his love and adoration for Marilyn Monroe, I think it would be lovely to channel Joe DiMaggio. So let's bring him in. Oh, he smells like cigarettes right away. And it's a thick tobacco smell like a pipe or a cigar. It's thicker than a cigarette. If it's a cigarette, it's a really intense cigarette. He says, I'm sorry, you want me to put this out? I'm like, no, because even if I said put it out, I don't know if you would. He says, I'm a gentleman, I'm a gentleman, and he kind of puts it out. And he sits down, and he's got like a brown suit on, kind of a white shirt, and then a tie. But the tie is pulled down a little bit. And he's handsome. He has kind of rugged, a rugged jawline, and uh, nice, it's nice. Um, he's got a hat on. Okay, he's got, he's mentioning two teams, which I don't know. Again, yeah. I don't know sports, so I have no idea what Joe DiMaggio played for. I know he played baseball. Hey, give me that cred, okay? That's good credit, right? I know he played baseball. Um, I see uh, what looks like a New York Yankees hat, and then I also see an A, a hat with an A on it. I don't know what that means. I don't know what A is. Is it Los Angeles or is that Atlanta? I don't know. Um, but it's red. It's a red hat with a white A, and then I see the navy blue New York Yankees hat. I know you're a pitcher. I know that. I remember that, I think. I think I remember hearing that with Marilyn Monroe, pitcher Joe, Joe DiMaggio or whatever, because you're like famous, that kind of thing. So, Joe, will you talk to us a little bit about, we're curious about your relationship with Marilyn. I mean, that's why I'm interested in chatting with you, to be really honest, because I know that I believe that you loved her, but I also believe that it was a difficult relationship for the both of you. So would you like to talk about that? Could you share that? I know you're private because I can feel that you're private. You have like a fence around you. Like when I go to feel you, there's like this big <laughs> fence around you. I can see you, you know, over the fence. But you're comfortable. You're sitting here and you're leaning way back in like a easy chair kind of thing and with brown loafers. I mean, I can see you very clearly. And so you're willing to be here. And it looks like you have a cocktail. It's like a, like a brandy glass, brandy snifter, a little brandy or whiskey. Whiskey, it looks like whiskey in there. Whiskey sour. I'm like, what? Whiskey sour, okay. And I see that and smoking. It looks like a cigar, you guys. It's either that or it's a really thick cigarette, I think. Um, very strange, anyway, that I focus on that detail. It's interesting. When I see stuff like that and I can't let it go, uh, it's just, it's a Bridget thing. All right, so. I know that you're private. I understand that you're private, but I, for one, and I'm sure many others who are watching here at Above Life Channel would agree that it was so sweet that you made sure that Marilyn had roses on her grave after she died. I mean, for years, for years. I, I'm just, I think that that is so sweet that's so loving he says um, he leans forward kind of in the cigarettes kind of and he says it's the least I could do she deserves that she deserves that much she deserves that much and he's saying I treated her unfairly I treated her poorly, and that's a matter of public record. I'm not proud of that. But she had an incredible, you know, Marilyn. Marilyn had an incredible capacity of forgiveness, and she was so open to love and just so wanting to be in love that she was a very loving person, a very, very loving person. and. And at times she was so incredibly sad and I found it difficult to make her happy and it was 
It's hard to be in a relationship with someone that you know you can't make happy. And I don't, I don't blame her. I don't blame her. And I don't believe that she didn't love me. I think that Marilyn was one of those people who was in love with being in love. And when it was new and invigorating and exciting, it was a, a good distraction for her. But I also believe that she wanted to have children and a family and that's not something that I could accomplish for her. I couldn't offer that to her. I, I had my own son eventually and I, I suppose it's different for women when that's something that some kind of a, a yearning that I, I can't as a man understand, I really understand that. But I know it was important to her and we wanted to have children, but she was, she was working at the time and, and the timing just was not, it wasn't, it never worked out well for us. And she talked a lot about having children, about being a mother and she had, you know, challenges. She had, um, troubles with her own mother and yeah, Marilyn was very generous and caregiving to her mother and I don't, I don't know that I could be if the circumstances were the same, which, which does speak to her character, taking care of her mother that couldn't take care of her. I mean, it, it does speak to her compassionate nature and her character. He's talking to me about somebody named Jeff. I think it was a friend of his, a good friend of his, Jeff. Jeff somebody, Jeff Scofin, Scofold, Scofield? Scolafi, Scott's, yeah, Scott's. Jeff somebody, Jeff and then something and then something. Um, good friend of his that tried to give me advice, he said. And uh, told me to stay away from the movie stars. <laughs> stay away from those Hollywood types. They'll get you every time. They'll just take your money and break your heart, he said. I'd have to say that it's probably true. Aside from the money part, because Marilyn didn't really, she wasn't all into the, she wasn't really all that interested in the money. I mean, oh, she could spend it, let me tell you. But more on the makeup and things that made her feel good. She was really, she was really free when she felt good. And those times were just some of the best times, you know. So did you have a falling out? Did you have an argument? I mean, there was some talk about um, that the two of you broke up after um, she was filming that iconic scene over the subway gate great with the white dress and that you were very upset about that and that everyone could see her undergarments and you were like disgusted. Is that true? What's that? Can you talk about that? I mean, I know that might be a little difficult to talk about, but I'm going to ask you the tough questions about that. He says that certainly that certainly didn't help things certainly didn't help things. But you can't make someone what they're not. You can't make them be someone that they're not. You can't change them. You can't force them to change. And Marilyn was a star. And she knew it more than anybody else. She was a star. And she couldn't not be in the public eye. She could not be the center of attention. She could not stand to be that. And in fairness, I was probably asking her to not be such a star. I know that doesn't excuse my behavior. Yeah, did you guys, I mean, it was uh, supposedly you were physical with her. You were physically abusive with her. And there was some talk of that in your relationship. Is that true? He says, I could be quite jealous. I could get jealous. Yeah, I could get jealous. And when I drink too much, I get hot-headed, you know, angry, short-tempered, 
yeah, I, you know, he says that that wasn't unheard of in in those times. Not I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm telling you what it is. Uh, yes, that's true. So was there a circumstance or situation that night or that next day after the because of the result of the movie that you or because of that scene that you she actually ended the marriage and she did he says she ended it it was it was her choice she ended it but again like he says I, I don't blame her I don't I'm not angry and she had a really big heart she had a way of forgiveness and speaking of that so can you talk about at the time of her death there's some talk that you, the two of you are maybe getting back together and that you were the one that planned her funeral and arranged, made all the arrangements and things. Is it true? Were you getting back together? I could hope. A fella can dream. I didn't become involved in her death, the aftermath, the planning and the arrangements and the things that you referred to, because we were together at the time. I became involved because we were never really apart. I, have all, I always loved Marilyn. I mean, who didn't, who wouldn't love Marilyn Monroe? So, she is such a beautiful, beautiful person and anyone would be lucky to be in her life, whether it be as a friend, which we talked off and on quite a bit. We did, even long after the marriage ended, we kept contact and kept relationship and friendship and well, there were times when we wouldn't speak for a while and then there were other times when she'd just call me up like nothing was going on. She'd say, hey Joe. And fill me in on things or chat with me and and I'd still worry about her and think of her and miss her and there is always hope that we could find uh, reconciliation and there would never be another woman in my life that would ever be able to compete with Marilyn Monroe so, Joe, I understand that you did get married after that. Yeah, yes, I did, yeah. That's what a fellow does. You know, you settle down and try to move on with your life, but not much of a life after, after a great loss like that. So what did you think about the the rumors and the tabloids and the gossip about her death. There was, there's talk, even now today, conspiracy theorists talk about that Marilyn Monroe was murdered and that the Kennedys were involved. And there's a lot of different kinds of variations of story around uh, Marilyn's death. Do you have any thing that you would like us as viewers or as fans of Marilyn Monroe to know about that, about her death? You know, she, it could be believed that she was slowly dying, that Hollywood was killing her. It was just sucking the life out of her. It was an accident. She may have at times been so depressed, you know, so low and some of those moments where she's just so sad that you could believe that she could commit suicide, that she could actually take her life, but she didn't. And that's not just wishful thinking. She didn't. It was an accident. And to the fact that it's not really anyone's business. But I understand. I understand being in her life. I understand the drama around her, the, the gossip, the, the, the need for information about her and every bit of interest in her. I understand the, 
the attraction and the draw to know about her. So I'm not, I'm not at all surprised that there is inquiry into her death and even now that you still are asking those questions. That I don't think it's disrespectful. I think it's a natural human curiosity and uh, the need to accept that she had more of a glorious or dramatic death than what it really was because she was such a bigger person, a bigger star, a bigger... Um, a bigger plate, a bigger part of, she just had such a bigness about her, fullness about her that it's hard to imagine that she just took too many pills. It's, it's, it's hard to accept that, I think, for people, but, but I, I know her, I, I know, and, and that's quite conceivable. Absolutely it is, quite believable. And I also, I understand about the timing about the lapse and in, in time from calling people and bringing in the authorities and, and, and all of that because there's a need, a really deep desire to protect her and in death as in life and respecting her as a person and trying to keep her, her image intact. So I understand the timing and the questions about that and, and I recognize that that would create uh, some of the mystery around her death, which if you actually, if you look at things now, if you consider it all, it would make sense because she should have some mystery around her death and, and like a scene in a movie, you know, it, the ending isn't clear. If the ending isn't clear, then it's more, it's more of a, well, life goes on or what else is possible for people. I think it was just difficult to accept it. It, it, w it was hard for me. I grieved for a long time. A long time. From death. So have you connected Joe with Marilyn in the afterlife? Yes, but not, he says yes. Yes, not in the way that your viewers will think though. Not, not in a romantic sense. It doesn't quite work out that way. The only reason I can connect with you now and talk about it now is because you see me as a reflection of, of the human life that I had. And Marilyn, as iconic as she is, she definitely has a bright light, a bright spirit. It's easy to want to sort of orbit around her. So yes, we've, we've reunited, but not in a romantic sense. It's, it's quite different in the afterlife. As you know, as, as spirit form, it's, it's more like, um, Quite literally orbit and stars stars in the night sky is more like what we are and so there's a mutual to translate it so you know your viewers will understand in human terms it's it's more of a mutual respect and humanity and kindness energy it's more of a, a unity a united energy uh, you would use the word connection Good. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Joe, for being here today and for sharing with us Joe DiMaggio in the afterlife and talking specifically about Marilyn Monroe, who I just adore. So thank you so much. He says, she loves, she loves you too, Bridget. <laughs> she loves you too. He says, I'm like, I know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for that. And for you here. This is Bridget. It's been my pleasure. As always here at Above Life Channel, the purpose of all of these channeling videos is to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope, and to encourage you to live your life. Because this, right here and right now, is your life. It's your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.